Welcome to another episode of All Tied Up. Today's special guest, we have T-Boz. T-Boz is known for being in the group TLC and has formally sold over 90 million records. A lot of people don't know about T-Boz's life and dealing with sickle cell, so we're going to just dive into her life and the struggles that she's had, and it's a lot, so stay tuned. We have T-Boz here. I appreciate you coming. I mean, I know it was last minute, so I'm excited that you're here today. I'm excited to be here and thanks for having me. So a lot of people don't realize that you're a businesswoman first. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've done so amazing in your career. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned about you recently, which, you know, I'm still blown away, is that you were one of the EPs, uh, executive producers on ATL, which mm-hmm. is such a big, big movie. Um, and a lot of people don't realize it was based on your life. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I think I learned quickly getting into the industry at 19 that you have to become a businesswoman if you want to keep your money (laughs) because everybody knows well those who know us know we went bankrupt so how do you go bankrupt when you're like the number one you know all girls group Mm -hmm. out right how does that even happen is it just mismanaged the funds or it was no actually it was the funds that we never received we were at the bottom of the totem pole so it was like arista and then LaFace had a production deal with them and then we were signed to pebbles production and then you have to pay lawyers split it three ways taxes by that time i remember they generated 75 million dollars and we only got 50,000 a piece that's when we held heirs to hostage <laughs> literally what you, you didn't got, know about that no i didn't know about that this. we with guns and uh lisa had the girls from the diversion center from where she burnt down the house and we actually literally held heirs to hostage because we want to know where our money was. You never heard about that. No, seventy-five million dollars, and we only and got, got fifty thousand a piece. Hey, wait a minute, what? Yeah. And and so, listen. Did you guys have enough guns? <laughs> yeah. Because and she had the face rent the cars, which was even more hilarious, to come up there with the guns. And so while the girls were taking down everything in the plex, you know, that said TLC, we were in the office, and I remember Sean Puffy Combs was having a meeting with some other guy and we bust in there and he was like, yo, B, what's happening? We was like, we got to talk to Clive Davis right now. So it was crazy. And how are you and Clive now? Actually, we're cool. He still lies and says it wasn't like that, but it was like Like that. that. Yeah, it was all girls. They tried to say it was some male bodyguards. It was a lot of stories, but because TMZ asked him um, so many years ago and he still was lying about it, but we held them hostage. We got our way. They called the police, but we didn't get arrested. <laughs> Thank God. Wow. I mean, when, did you get that as a wire transfer, that 50? Or No, we ended up only getting $2 million after that. But it was funny because it was still money we had to recruit and pay back. So it was just, it, it, those days are over because we're free now. We own our own masters. I finally own all my own publishing. Wow. Hallelujah. I thought this day would never come. I'm finally here at that day that I've been waiting wow, for. Wow, so you own all of it now? Yes. Is it, well, how does that work with one of your members being deceased? Like this, is it a three way split or? It's hard because everything was a third, a third, and a third, uh-huh. and she has it in the state now. Um, but you were the main singer, so the yeah. publishing would pretty much go majority to you, right? No. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Because that's separate writing and singing. Um, so you get. You know, you have mechanicals, so entertainment money, and then you have, like, publishing, which is if you wrote. So rappers, you know, generally write their own music, and our rapper and our group did. So her writing is her publishing. My writing is my publishing. So they didn't even let me write until, like, what, the third album? So my how, first song I wrote in TLC was Unpretty. How, how do you, I mean, once you start cutting it all up, and, you know, where does that money go? So just say we have $1, right? Mm-hmm. You wrote on it. Lisa mm-hmm. wrote on it, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then the producers, mm-hmm. and then you have the label. Like, what what's left out of that one dollar? I'm gonna tell you how it goes. So <laughs> it's crazy. So when you do a deal, okay, say a song is a hundred percent. Fifty percent goes to production, which is the music, and fifty percent goes to writing. So it's broke down like a hook is twenty five percent versus could be worth either five or 10% 
It's crazy how it's who, broken who do, down. Who does your splits? Like, is that something like BMI it's or just, ASCAP? Yeah, ASCAP, BMI, but, you know, some of us have publishing deals or admin deals. But the thing that's so crazy is, like, when you do a publishing deal, I'm thinking, you know, um, if I signed a deal that says I owe four songs, but I'm thinking four songs, so, oh, that's easy. No. If I only write one hook on a song, that doesn't equal one song. I'd have to write four hooks. So that's 425 to equal 100. Oh, that should be equal one song? To one song. Wow. So I'd have to write four hooks on one, on four songs to equal one song in my contract. You see how that works? Well, that's kind of shady, isn't it? Exactly. So you have to learn the business. Because you're thinking like, oh, I wrote this song. I, and if I get 50, and if I write a whole song, that's 50%. So I have to write two songs to equal one. You get what I'm saying? So you almost nearly have to write the song, perform in the song, and <laughs> produce the song to be equal one song, to equal 100%. So I would have to write two full songs to equal one song on my publishing deal. If, if, if you're the producer? <laughs> producer or the writer, because oh, this, yeah. 50% is writing, 50% is music. So... If I write a whole song, I'm only getting 50%. But what's funny is I owe 50% of my 50% to my publishing company. <laughs> wow, so so I'm free now. So that means I get all my 50% now. And if I wrote 30%, I get the whole 30%. Because before then, I was still getting only 15%, even though I wrote 30% of it. Wow. So, so, you know, I know Stevie Wonder, he owns his catalog. Mm -hmm. Um. I know Michael Jackson, I think he owned his catalog. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, then and a lot Be of Beatles, Beatles and then a lot of other people's too. So he was smart. Whoever his Absolutely. attorneys were, he was smart. Very. And because he licensed that, he did tons of licensing deals, right? And what we did is we re sang all of our original music. And so we let Sony keep their version and we licensed out our version. You guys did your own version. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Is that is it sound the same or? It sounds exactly the same. You can't tell the difference between the music, um, because my voice is still the same. Like, you so, know. Question for you: If you were to put out um, like a remastered version mm -hmm. of you know the Essentials songs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it were your songs, mm -hmm. would you get paid, or is the the label get paid on that? We get paid because it's our version. Oh, but and since you guys wrote the songs, right? Not all of the songs, but um, that's separate because um, that's publishing. But performance royalties we get for performing all of them. Mm -hmm. But as far as getting the songs licensed, we license our version and Sony can license theirs. But most of the people are going to call us for our version anyway. Because you want to talk to the artist and be like, hey, can we use Unpretty? That's a song that I wrote. And they just asked me, um, to license that for a show just the other day. And I said, yeah, of course, I would love to. I can't think of what the show is, but it was a huge show. And I was like, really? Like, oh, my God, that's so cool. So that will recent, um, it will be coming out soon. And as soon as I remember what it was, I'll tell you. <laughs> is, is, so if you, if you license your music, right, mm -hmm. for a commercial, mm -hmm. right, so you would have, you would get paid, and obviously whoever wrote on it, and mm -hmm. then the producer would get paid, but mm -hmm. n nothing to do with the label, right? When we were signed to them, yes, but now no, because we own our masters, so it all comes to us, and we're our own record company. So you guys are basically independent at this point, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's something that a lot of people don't know how to do. They no, think that they everybody don't. has to go to a label, and that's how the business is. Well, a lot of people know more now, thank God, because um, of you know social media and the internet. We didn't have that. That tool wasn't, you know. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, available to us or whatever back in our day. Um, so if you really sold something or, you know, things got out word of mouth, you really it really stuck and had some power to it because we didn't have these avenues. You had CDs. Yeah, know, that's it. Don't. And promoting on TV and word of mouth. And, you know, if the, if the record company didn't put marketing behind the album, it was because you truly had fans that stuck with you. That's amazing, you know, because you've been through the CD days, the the VHS mm -hmm. tapes, right? Yeah. Seeing, you know, seeing your tours and your mm -hmm. concerts. And what was that like to see that transition from that kind of media to the digital platform where you just download it from your phone? It's hard because there was a lot more money back in our day. You got paid way more. So now 
it's not as much money. There's not as many record labels anymore because it made a lot of people shut down. You know, streaming and all that took over um, because what was it? MySpace, YouTube, all this wasn't like this. You know what I'm saying? We only had like television shows and radio, period, and just touring. You know, but all these kids, they have so many different avenues that they can use to make money and get their name out there, sell their music, um, go indie, independent. Um, it's just it's just really cool. But for me to be coming from a cassette to a, you know, DVD and just, you know, even we used to do reels, like when you actually used to put it on tape. <laughs> and when we used to have to fly vocals, it was hard because we really had reels to do and you had to get re It took hours. Now you got Pro Tools and all the logic and all these different, you know, programs that make, you know, anybody and their mama can do tracks just like that. It wasn't like that for us. So you're a real performer, a real choreographer, yeah. mm -hmm. a real artist all together pretty much because you're a writer yeah absolutely I remember one of my friends asked me did I know what a real choreographer was and I was like no because you know I'm just a person at the time who loved to dance and it was just in my soul something I felt I loved it and I grew up that way and I was like no I don't know what a real choreographer is he was like well it's not a person that learns dances and teaches them it's a person who creates dances and and makes the world follow so I said well, then I'm going to be a real choreographer. So I did the creep routine. I did the dance and what about your friends and, you know, the one that Michael Jackson. Yeah. When Michael did it and uh, remember the time, I, I was like, I made it now. Wow. And then the waterfalls yeah. routine, that was mine. And which which was the one that he did in the, the, the remember the time? Remember the time. Oh, I remember that. So he was walking, right? No, I was yeah. with the girls and, and they were your, dancing. Remember uh, the time. Mm, that was from what about your friends? Wow. The choreographer, and I'm not going to say who, she took it from our choreographer. No. And <laughs> somebody else popular, though. And But I've, I've, I've worked with Lorianne, too, um, and uh, be, when she was still a dancer, but um, and took it to Mike. But MJ could do whatever he wants, you know. But that's when I saw, like, because if you go like this, people start singing Waterfalls. That's when I knew I made it. I was like, okay. So I've done a routine and the world knows, like if you just do a certain dance, you know, that's a TLC song and that's dance. That's amazing that you did that because it's, you know, that dance, you know, and there's not been so many, I mean, there's been the Dougie, right? Yeah. But you kind of, you kind of there were there first, right? You kind of put your stamp down there. Well, actually it was Michael. Yes. I, you know, then, Michael is was, ultimately always going to be guys, number one. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, what's interesting about Michael, I was watching some videos yesterday about it. And they said after that thriller came out, everybody, you know, wanted to do that dance and made him a, a megastar. It wasn't he was a star, but it made him a megastar worldwide. Absolutely. And then there was you guys. And you guys were known worldwide, too. And, you know, you guys obviously were choreographing your own stuff and being a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like to be you know, on the same level as Michael Jackson being. Well, I was never on the same level. You guys were a female, the first number one female group. I wish. Yeah. So why you discredit? You were the number one female group in the world. 80 million records sold worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And we still hold the title, which I still can't believe. Like, People lie and say You're the most humble people, person but... I have ever met. <laughs> and we're sitting here talking about 80 million records sold mm -hmm. worldwide tours. You know, you seeing millions and millions and millions of fans. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that like? Lights turn on, you know, and your song comes on. You see the biggest smile on your face. Cause, mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that surreal? Yeah, it is. You know, my daughter is funny because fans, but my daughter's like, Mom, you know you change when you go up there. I'm like, what? Because she was like, you're like totally no longer my mom. Like you turn into somebody else. And I'm like, do I? And then other People were like, yeah, you totally change into a whole other person. But um, I, you know, I think about it when I was little. And I've always said this since I was seven years old. I was like, mom, they're going to know my name. I'm going to be on billboards. People are going to watch me. And she would be like, okay, baby. And I'd be like, you don't believe me? She'd be like, yeah. She was just like, you know, always be the best at anything you do. She was like, even if you're a garbage truck driver, you just always be the best. You never know who's watching. And, and, you know, always make sure your work ethic is great. And I was like, okay, so I'll always be the best, Mom. And um, she said as long as I kept my 
integrity and morals and character intact, she would support anything I did. So I was like, well, that's going to be on TV. <laughs> so it was crazy when I was seven years old because that's when I had a vivid dream. I would be running from the left side of the stage to the right, had on baggy clothes, which is crazy, but I could never see my face. And I had a mic in my hand. And I remember going to the doctor with my mom. And the doctor said, well, she has this disease called sickle cell. and She's not going to live past 30. She's going to be disabled her whole life and she can never have kids. And I remember looking at my mama like, now, what is he talking about? Because I'm going to blow up and I'm going to be on TV. You know, this is not my story. But she just whispered to me, God has the last say so in your life. Don't listen to him and we'll talk in the car. Because I was looking at her like, this can't be. Like, what is she, what is he talking about? Um, and I just thought about that. Like, why would you say that in front of a kid that young? And that could have really shattered and ruined my whole entire life on how I viewed life if I didn't have a good and strong mom. Like, you told me I was going to die. You told me I was never going to be anything, basically. And I would never have chase or chance. Like, that's crazy. That's um, that's an amazing story. And, you know, it, it kind of gives me chills because, you know, I've never really read the Bible. I've read bits mm -hmm. and pieces and I just started reading you know, just because I want to know, right? Mm -hmm. And you, I was reading the section where it talks about Pontius Pilate mm -hmm. and Jesus standing there, and Jesus says to him, mm -hmm. says, "You have you will, you you cannot govern, you know, my my mind. Mm -hmm. I have free will. You can govern this body, but mm -hmm. you cannot govern my mind. My my mind, absolutely. You know, and that that really, you know, is a testimony of what you just went through. You know, mm -hmm. no one can break you. Nah." I'm like, if you can face death, you can face anything. Like, you know, people you like. with a smile. You're <laughs> grateful. You're happy. Oh, thank you. You're a good person. You're an incredible parent. Oh, um, thank you. you are too, though. You know, it's way. Hey. 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 They don't make them like us, do they? It's, no. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Yeah, we're real great parents. Look at all this candy on the table. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the kids aren't here. Yeah. No. Nah. It's too funny. But, you know, your story is very empowering. Um a person that is the 18 year old version of you, mm -hmm. what would you give them? What kind of, um, like what, ki what kind of knowledge could you drop on an 18 year old that was your age? Man, especially with the day of social media and you know, cyber bullying and a lot of kids, you know, I see it breaks my heart because they're taking their lives based on, this social media thing is really crazy and strong. Like the fact that, you can see now there's more negative people in the world than there are positive. And just the way people gravitate more towards the bad things than the good on there. And it's given the cycle people a platform. And now the day of respecting artists and treating them like the superstars they are, people are into breaking people down. Um, misery loves company, making them feel like maybe if I talk about this person, it'll take away from how I feel about myself or my life because I can't see sitting on the internet all day and downing people or going on somebody's page I don't like. If I don't like you, I don't know anything about you. I've had people like supposedly hate me, but they know everything about my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I It's just strange to me. So for my daughter, I, I sit her down and I said, remember when you were in the hospital, whose face did you see? And she'll go, yours. I, I get emotional about it because I think about, you know, the times I could have died and just, you know, stuff like that. And I have a little girl to raise. And I get upset because I lost somebody like that. Not that long ago, just because of cyberbullying, and um, it just it just bothers me that I couldn't help this person out, and um, it 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 hurts my soul. I tell you, because these people don't mean anything if they weren't there in the hospital when you were sick. Then why does it matter? And this person was like only ten years old, and they like hung themselves because of what somebody said. <laughs> my kid's 10 you know so obviously and i just you know what i'm saying so i, I you know um so like this kid's even old. younger than 18 like gave me the chills look my, my <laughs> look at my look at my hand my I arm know. it's like look at this 
I have goosebumps everywhere because 10, you know, it freaks me out because I think of my son. And just like you said, your face, who do you see? Mm -hmm. You know, I can't, I can't even imagine that. And I'm, I'm still just, it freaks me out because it's something that you can't ever imagine or people say it will never happen to you. But yeah, I there, never thought. You know, you know I what it know is? I know somebody who would yeah. kill herself because of what somebody said on social media. You know what it is? There's it's like, power yeah. in these words and what people do. I think, honestly, these people who start this stuff should have something like, you know, you're getting, I bet you if a parent got a $5,000 fine for their child saying a, a terroristic threat or something to somebody else's kid, a lot of this stuff would stop. Because at the end of the day, there's no way as a parent, these, these people don't parent either. That's another problem because there's no way that I don't know what my daughter's doing or saying. And some of it is a learned behavior. So how do you even know to hate like this? Like kids are pure. They don't grow up like hating or being prejudiced or, you know, you're this word, you're that word is something they were taught. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that this 10 year old was being cyber bullied and nobody's in jail, it makes no sense to me. Like you should lock up the kids and the mamas and the daddies because I bet you if I got a $5,000 fine, if my kid was like, oh, cause I remember somebody told my daughter to shoot herself in the, shoot herself in the head. And um, this was over something that people thought I had, I had said something about Rihanna and I didn't. Um, we were in Australia and um some kid asked a question and i answered it and the question was um is it a you know um they felt pressured you know because everybody takes their clothes off and we said my answer was we're living proof like i don't have anything against anybody who shows their body or whatever bodies are beautiful whatever if you have it show it that's your thing just that's not my way and how i've chosen and we're living proof that this happened so i was just saying you know the more promiscuous you are on tv and i think i was talking about the bad girls club and i said the more you show your body the more you and when i did you they put rihanna's picture up so it was the press being messy and so um i wiped my face and everything <laughs> Um, so when I said that, I think she actually thought I said something, posted something and then took it down, but her Navy went crazy and they were like, oh, instead of telling Rihanna what to do, you should, you know, have told left eye to wear her seatbelt. People were like, oh yeah, tell your daughter to shoot herself oh, wow. in the head. Like they were going there. Oh, you, I hope you die from your sickle cell. Stuff like that don't bother me. You know what I'm saying? But when you start involving kids and, and, and then telling me to die when I really have almost died, like, I don't allow my fans to do that on my ha behalf. And if they do, I say something because I don't want you going hard for me like that. We don't even know each other like that. You know what I'm saying? You could be a fan, but she don't even know you. Right. Absolutely. You need yeah. it to begin. Better. And even like, you know, with people, people don't even do this kind of stuff anymore. The magazines, they don't do this kind of stuff. I like looking at pictures. Yeah, I think so too. But we're going to do the same thing with you. And uh, this is really not part of this. This is just more. Um, <clears throat> first off, I appreciate you coming out here and spending some time with us. Uh, we've cried. We've laughed. <laughs> but, you know. And I hate to cry. Oh my God, I hate crying. But it's sincere. Your mm -hmm. energy is always sincere, and uh, I can see why your fans love you oh, as much you. as I love you. And uh, I appreciate everything. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Give me a hug. <laughs> if you like what you've heard here today, please subscribe to our Spotify, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Thanks for listening.